With in-context design, path features can be created based on features in other components of an assembly. With external references in place, a change in a feature of one component can dynamically change a related feature in another. But sometimes it might be advantageous to turn off external references. In this video, I will show you three ways of doing that. So to start off, it is actually possible to turn off external references while doing in-context design. Here is an assembly of a top housing in yellow and a bottom housing. Coming from the bottom housing, there are these two features which are actually interfering with the top housing. I have since created openings in the top housing using in-context editing. So let's open up the top housing to take a look. If you look at the card extrude feature that was used to create the openings, you can see that there is an arrow symbol over here, which means that the feature has external references. So if you are interested in how the in-context editing was done, please do check out that video. I will provide a link in the top right hand corner. So it's back to the assembly file. What I'm going to do here is to repeat the in-context editing process without adding any external references. So I've mapped onto my shortcut S key an option to toggle off external references. If you don't have this, just right-click, customize, filter out the assembly options, and look out for this icon with the chains, and just drag it onto your toolbar. So let's toggle off external references. Once that is toggled off, you will see that the icon has a different shade of grey. So any sketches that I make from this point on would not be externally referenced. I'm not going to repeat the in-context editing here, so let's skip ahead to the point where it has been completed. So the in-context editing has been done. When I open up the part in a separate window, you can see that the arrow no longer appears. When I open up the sketch, you can see that the sketch is undefined. So it's on to the second method. Assuming that the openings were done with external references turned on, we have the option of locking them or breaking them. If we right click on the top housing in the assembly tree, you will see that there is an option to list external references. Clicking on that will bring up a window that lists down all the external references. We can choose to lock all references. Choosing this option will essentially freeze the relationship between the top and bottom housing. An asterisk appears beside the description in the feature tree. If we change the dimensions of the features coming from the bottom housing, the top housing openings will not change accordingly. The change will only occur if we unlock the relation. So if we go back to the external references window again, you will see that we have an alternative option called break all. Now it is important to take note that break all is irreversible. Selecting this option will essentially break off all external references permanently. And you will not be able to activate these references again. So once that is done, you will see that a cross appears beside the description in the assembly tree. So we have come to the last method of handling external references and that is to handle them at the part document level. So let's open up the top housing in a separate window and start to edit the sketch that was used to create the openings. So map onto my shortcut S key is a function called display delete relations. If you don't have this, just simply right click to customize and add this in. Just make sure that you do not mistakenly choose the view sketch relations icon and it is quite similar. So let's display delete relations and filter out the external relations and we shall delete all of them. So once that is done, you can see that the sketch becomes undefined. So that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.